Hello, I'm Stephen Fry, and I have adored gadgets ever since I was knee-high to a space hopper. My obsession runs deep. When I was 15, I laid out a fortune on the first new Polaroid camera. And 40 years later, I still have a desperate need to have the latest phone, alarm clock, egg timer as soon as they're launched, if not before. Gadgets entertain us. They connect us. They educate us, they impress us, and of course, sometimes they frustrate us. But whichever way you look at them, they make the world a, a much, much better, and dare I say, happier place. So, come into my world as I, along with some of my friends, reveal a feast of magnificent oh. gadgets that will provide for a fun and stress-free existence. I could certainly fall asleep. Some will be from the future. Oh, my God. Uh, Some from the past. This here is the first iPod. <laughs> Some are gadgets you can only dream of owning. Oh, completely silent. It's electric. And simple gizmos you can buy today that will change the way you live your life tomorrow. Oh, I see. <laughs> it's vibrating. Particularly. And every week I'm going to be creating my very own super gadget. The ultimate gadget of its kind. Well, I'll be giving it a go. Oh, oh no! Consider me your humble servant, your knight in crumpled corduroy, your gadget man. Tonight on Gadget Man, it's all about food. I swear to you, I've never had a better sausage ever. <laughs> I'll be showing you how technology can make the weekly shop a pleasurable experience. That's my boy. I'll be revealing the magnificent cooking devices that every kitchen should be armed with. Hmm. Look at that. And I'll be showcasing some quite extraordinary gadgetry to wow my friends oh. as I throw the ultimate Gadget Man dinner party. Oh, beautiful. Food, glorious food. What is there more handsome, as the great Lionel Bart once wrote? Thank you, Everett. And it's certainly true that when it's served up to you on a plate like this, oh, there's nothing more wonderful. But for most of us, even a spoiled pig like me, there's the great faff of choosing how to buy your food and how to prepare it. It's not easy. It's one of the curses of the 21st century. I don't think she knows. Mm. I'm spending the day preparing for a spectacular dinner party. First, some tech to make my supermarket shop a little more fun. Let's start with the Smarter Cart, the only robot shopping trolley in the world. Good boy, come on. Its onboard camera tracks your body shape allowing the trolley to automatically follow you so you don't have to push it. And as it will know the layout of the store better than you will, it can also guide you, like a supermarket sat-nav. That's it, you come here. Turn round. That's an obedient car, stop. It's the first time this prototype has ever been outside of America and I suspect it has a touch of jet lag. Either that or it fancies me. Yes. One day, these carts will connect directly to your internet fridge, creating a shopping list that's displayed on the monitor. Scan an item, and it gets automatically ticked off the list. Six pack of sausages. It recognizes them. Genius. A few years before it'll catch on, but uh, it's on its way. Come with me. Come along. So do you think this thing will catch on? I'd like to see how it would work in a really busy shop, say, at yeah. Christmas time. That would be interesting. That's the point, isn't it? Yeah. Because technology hasn't yet caught up with the human ability to dodge and weave. It's uh, bad enough with people yeah. controlling it, let, let alone something. Could be like something a scene of bumper cars yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing a gadgety dinner party later and I'll need wine, but the choice is overwhelming. Thankfully, I have this wine find app on hand to make a recommendation. Meats, beef, steak.
steak. What's it recommending? Margot, Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, Chilean Merlot. I don't think I've ever had Chilean Merlot, so let's, let's take their advice. In you go. Um, there'll be at least one of us, so I might need two bottles. Um, there we go. Follow me. Time to pay. Checking out is going to get a lot quicker as more and more phones become equipped with so-called near-field communication. Just wave them at a contactless reader and the money leaves your account. Oh, that's Thank so cool, you. isn't it? And your receipt. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much indeed. And I can press that button to make it wider. Slip it over my shoulder. That's great. And go to the car. And how about this as the ultimate gadget man shopping car? It's on sale next year and is called the Lightning. There we go. Ah. Well, it's time to move on. This is rather swish, isn't it? Let's start her up. Oh, completely silent. It's electric. Look out, look out, look out. Vehicle reversing, vehicle reversing. Drive. Now, I know not everyone loves technology as much as I do. I've known Simon Hopkinson, one of our country's greatest food writers, for 20 years. He hates anything modern. But I reckon some of the clever gizmos I'm considering using for my dinner party might just change his mind. No, I hate that. I knew you would. <laughs> it, it, I knew it would just turn you, turn you absolutely livid with fury. Nor did he like the machine that makes fresh pasta in 15 minutes. So I, I pull out this... Oh! It's alive. And the result is spaghetti. The electric pizza oven with a traditional rotating stone base. Or this clever little garlic chopper. Big bits, small bits. You're not impressed, are you? And when it came to finally slicing an onion... We have a race, now. Infuriatingly, his old-fashioned knife skills beat the pull-cord spinning blades of my veggie chop. Even this touchscreen hob, which automatically senses a pan and heats the area accordingly, failed to win him over. Yeah, I'm a gas man. Yeah, and I like I like seeing the flame. Then, against all odds, I had a breakthrough. What you do is you actually screw this in. Like oh, I so. like this. Ooh. You're there. I think I'm there, aren't yeah. I? Yeah. And then you pull it out. Old. That's it. Oh. Oh. Look, look oh, what comes chunks. out. It's whole chunks. It's, chunk. it's the whole <laughs> chunky thing. Gosh. Isn't that brilliant? And you can push through. I like that. Hear that? He liked it. Although Simon reserved his biggest enthusiasm of the day for a rather retro runner bean slicer, produced from his very own back pocket. Oh, it widens the spring, yeah. And then it holds it, and as you push through, oh my goodness. it takes off the strings. And they are lovely, because runner beans need to be thin. I shall definitely be using that at tonight's soiree. If it's mild, I might even be tempted to barbecue. We Brits do host over 120 million a year, after all. But I don't want any old thing. I want something that will get my guests gawping. So I've asked three pals to test some of the most innovative on the market. Alex is using the barbecue, which cooks everything on rotating skewers. Switch the power on and it spins around, does all the cooking for you, so no more flipping burgers. That is pretty lazy, to be honest. Vanessa is using the big green egg. It's actually a modern take on a 3,000-year-old Chinese design, relying on an airtight cooking chamber with a very precise temperature control. So it's made um, out of ceramic clay, 
and gets up to 650 Celsius inside. Nice. Or what you can do is moderate the temperature with these vents, that one there and the one at the bottom. Yeah. And then you can, I don't know, smoke some meat for say nine hours or something, because it stays hot for 10 to 12 hours. Wow, okay. So when yours has died, a death. <laughs> You'll still be cooking. Mine's still going. Okay. Yeah. But mine's gas. DJ is using the Blacktop 360 party grill. Not only is it a gas barbecue, but it's also a griddle and built-in deep fat fryer. With this, you've got the optimum temperature, or you can change it, whatever it is. Uh, you're cooking for as long as you want, or until the gas runs out. I've also given this lot the iGrill app. It connects to a meat thermometer via Bluetooth, alerting you when the food is perfectly Ooh, cooked. food's actually ready. So, after the cooking and the tasting, which was our favourite? I think if you're a serious barbecuer, you would go for this one. But I think in terms of money and... Value for money, I see. And, and portability. Speed, yeah, then yeah. I think maybe, maybe the gas one. Yeah. yeah, but I think we have a clear winner, really, in that, in terms of practical usage for, for the average Briton, but this for, in terms of the, the sort of uh, Margot from the good life who I wanted to so, show yeah. off object. I think if you're serious about the ball, yeah. If we weren't in a recession, then we're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I think on reflection that a barbecue is just too much hassle, besides the weather's turning decidedly chilly. But I happen to know that there are gadgets out there which can create genuine excitement in the kitchen. So it's back to Gadget Man HQ. It's me. To start planning my spectacular dinner party. And here are my sous chefs. Gadgets that blend, gadgets that slice, gadgets that dice, gadgets that peel, gadgets that cook, gadgets that do just about everything. All I have to do is press a few buttons. Bliss. In just a couple of hours, some friends will be round for dinner, and I've got some truly spectacular surprises lined up for them. For now, it's time to cook, and everything will be prepared using my pick of the best tasty tech. We'll have soup for starters, but I won't actually be cooking it. I'll be cheating by using the Vitamix 500, a so-called performance blender. Quite noisy. There's a two-horsepower motor in there driving the blades at 240 miles per hour. There's no need to boil the veg for hours on end, as the friction of the blades is enough to cook them. Oh, look at that. You can see the steam. And that's warm soup. Yes, it may cost £600, and you may be able to get a can of soup for, um, well, about 80 pence. But I'm a gadget lover, not an accountant. For the main course, we'll be having steak, cooked in the sous vide style. After vacuum packing the meat, it's cooked in a water bath at a precise 56.5 degrees and can be left for hours on end. None of the juices or nutrients can escape, so the flavour is sensational. That is just about the most succulent steak I've ever tasted. It genuinely is. But and maybe it needs a soup salt of salt, a suspicion of moutard, and perhaps more chips, definitely more chips. Making gadget chips begins with the rotato peeler. It's three times quicker than using a knife. Then it's a retro chopper, followed by this health-conscious fryer. It needs just a teaspoon of oil combined with hot air to make supposedly light and fluffy chips in 25 minutes. I'll let my guests be the judge of that. And here they are. The delightful comedian Joe Brand. Exceptionally well. The delectable mathematician Carol Forderman. Oh, <laughs> it's cold out there. And the devilish illusionist Darren Brown. Good to see you. Thanks for coming along. Yeah, no, it's colder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I don't have a gadget to make it warmer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here we are. Wow. We start with a traditional aperitif, served in a very untraditional way. Here's a straw. <laughs> yeah. It's called le waf. So, Joe, all you do is breathe in the cloud in there. So, <laughs> pop my straw in. Pull as far in as you can and just have a, have a suck. Solid end. Oh, my God. And you have a go, Carol? Into the cloud. <coughs> yeah. That it's happened like, the first like time. Weight. Always happens the first time. Embarrassing. <laughs> embarrassing. And again. Off you go. I think I ought to have a go as well. It smells well. amazing. 
It does, doesn't it? Yeah. There's brandy in that. Well, that's, oh, what that's lovely. It uses ultrasound, would you believe, to turn a spirit into cloud. And the spirit, is, in fact, is Scotch whiskey. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. I didn't that, think it was like whiskey. Can you get them in Tesco's? Not yet. Right. But, you know, we like to think of ourselves here at Gadget Man as early adopters. And uh, <laughs> what we try today, the world tries next year. Yes. Do you get drunk on it, then? Yes, you don't burn off... The, it doesn't burn off the alcohol. Okay. <laughs> in order to face my soup, you may need a little more. Very good for me. That's fantastic. Time for the first course, the soup made with my high-speed blender. Now, you, you ingest this orally, do we, this one? Yes, no. you do. <laughs> ingest it <laughs> by mouth. It's carrot and courgette. Oh, yes, it is. Well, it's very tasty. Oh, it's mm. Not very hot, though. It's not very hot, I have to admit. <laughs> mm, a lukewarm reception. So I decide to unveil the first of my surprises. <laughs> wine. Why not wine? Wine. Um, yes, yes, I've got a corkscrew in here somewhere. Um, Darren, I think you'll enjoy this. If I, um, there's somewhere which find a corkscrew. Oh, there we go. Oh! This actually oh, is a corkscrew. You can't get it in a drawer, though, can you? <laughs> it took sculptor Rob Higgs three years to build this, the world's biggest bottle opener. Isn't it something? It's made from 380 different bronze parts and yours to buy for just £150,000. Something so touchingly human about it isn't it that we go to such great lengths to achieve that's the joke ma it. it is a deliberate magic sort of artistic yeah. joke that it is yeah on the one hand it's a waste of ingenuity but on the other hand it's a celebration of it that's yeah, so that whole thing dropped don't worry that's a good okay. thing yeah <laughs> it's now going into it's going in yeah of course we're going into the bottle i have got an emergency stop button here, which is the health and safety piece. It's never been used yet. So oh, God, right. okay. The cork. It's coming it? out. The cork is... The cork oh, is coming just... out. Oh, perfect. Oh, look. Oh, the, my word. Lifting up. the whole thing... <laughs> that just to lift the cork. Yeah, well, and, and, and you'll see that more than, more than lifting oh, the cork... Oh, it's deposited the cork in a little bowl. It's deposited the cork into the bowl, very neat and tidy. <laughs> but now we're about to suddenly... Meanwhile... The, the, this bell shows that the second phase is about to be entered into, so keep winding. I love this so much. Oh. That's all right, that's a wait. And now, it's all being done by clockwork now. Oh! So lovely. I kept thinking, no, it's not going to work, yeah. it's not going to work. It does. <laughs> that's all done in. A glass of wine. That's incredible. I can't believe I've never had this in my life. <laughs> I wouldn't buy one for an alcoholic. <laughs> now the main course, the sous vide steak and the air fryer chips. Well, it smells fantastic, Steve. Well, that's very sweet of you. Um, Gosh. Ah, there we go. <gasps> chips and Stop. beans. I did the beans because I had a lovely bean slicing gadget. Um, <laughs> so I couldn't resist having beans. And I'll just pour myself some wine using this gizmo here because yeah. it's a recently opened bottle of wine with an extraordinary corkscrew. Oh, this, you know, to chambre, as it were, to, to sort of uh, let the air into the wine <laughs> so that it isn't so sharp and tight. This, this does exactly that. Is that battery driven? Is no, no, it's, it's, no, it's just, a, it's just, um, it's just gravity. It's great, isn't it? Strange um, and it, and it, um, it tastes a lot nicer once it's been through one of those. The uh, steak is fab. For the sous vide, I'll defer to Darren, who it transpires is a bit of a fan. Sous vide, literally under vacuum. Um, it's a tub of water. You set it to the temperature that matches the inside of whatever it is you want to cook when it's at its perfectly cooked state. So the inside yeah. of a steak is 56.5 degrees. Do you know so you that? So you set it to that. <laughs> I, I just I love it. I, so you set it to that, and the result is a perfect steak every time. Oh, so I hope you enjoy it. It's nice. My verdict is it's a lovely meal. Good. And it's so nice for a change to see runner beans that are even in length. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Um, the chips. It is perfect. Mm. The chips, well, which are not quite as crisp as I'd hoped. They taste the glass, deep fried. They taste deep fried. That's the amazing thing. They taste as if they're really quite oily almost. Yeah, they it's do taste one, like those horrible one teaspoon. things. No point having a chip if you don't think you're going to get heart disease. <laughs> 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 Pudding next, which my guests will have to help me make. We put in sugar, cream, some vanilla essence. Yep, that's good. OK, so it's pudding time. Ready? To me, to me, to me. <laughs> <laughs> Chucking the ball around for 20 minutes cools the ingredients sufficiently to make 
ice cream. Oh, beautiful ice cream. Real ice cream. Ice cream. Mm. Wow. Oh, but well, that makes make ice cream. It. Yeah, it's an ice cream maker. And, and it keeps you fit. And, and you don't need any electricity. There's, just, no, there's no electricity at all. Just your there's own really calories, which is rather handy. <laughs> but ice cream on its own is rather dull. And I've got something that will make your pudding raw. Come with me. You have to come all up. of us. Yes, yes. come with oh. me. It's the world's first chocolate printer. Yes! Wow. And this is actually going to be, with any luck, my face. Can you see it now? <laughs> oh. Designed by scientists from the University of Exeter, it can scan any image and then print it using a syringe full of melted chocolate. Domestic versions should be on sale in the next few years. I reckon you're only up to about 30 calories, so... <laughs> <laughs> With the magic of television, we have prepared four, yeah. not one. Oh. And um, they are, three of them are highly triumphant. One is possibly not as complimentary as it ought to be. It just <laughs> went a little awry. Miss Brand, I don't think that's bad at all. Oh, no, that's oh, okay. That's, that's really good, good isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mr. Brown. <laughs> oh, oh, that's, that's oh. astonishing. It's really writing. good. That's You're not just really good. It really is impressive. <laughs> Carol, I'm re I don't know what went wrong. The most beautiful person in the world. And that's what happened. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, the name is lovely, be honest. Yeah. <laughs> it's very accurate. I will um, serve those, I think, in the conservatory. And now for my postprandial pièce de la résistance, the next best thing to a teleporter. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Welcome to Saigon, ladies and gentlemen, a fine, bustling city all around us. Whoa, the woman's looking at me weird. <laughs> this is my igloo dome. It links five HD projectors to create a 360 cinema with specially made footage transporting us to other countries. Underwater. Oh, wow. Even out of this world. Just incredible. What's your impression of Evie? It's been amazing. The food's been terrific. Well, I'm so thrilled yeah. because I can't tell you how much I've been worrying myself over whether or not you would find all these gadgets absurd and that they didn't work and that <laughs> everything was ridiculous, but that you've taken them in exactly the spirit in which I think gadgets should be taken. That they are, on the one hand, useful, yes, but on the other, more important hand, Somehow they engage you, they are fun, they make yeah. you smile. They are fun. They're actually, uh, they're sort of joyful, they're a kind of celebration somehow. That it's okay to find a gadget funny and useful at the same time. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Thank you it's all so amazing. much for coming. Thank you. do have my face. Oh, I have the most